Hey there, welcome. Today we'll be talking about my first year at Purdue. This video will be structured into three different parts. The first will be the courses I took, the second will be like activities I participated in, like hackathons and clubs, etc. And finally about housing. This will be a bit of a longer video, mind you, so I put some timestamps down below so you can go wherever you want in the video. But yeah, let's get into it. Alright, let's talk about my first semester. So my first semester I took English 110, I took CS 180, CS 193, English 280, TDM 101, and Math 160. So let's talk about it. So CS 180 is object-oriented programming with Java and it has two sections, CS 180 Black and CS 180 Gold. So CS 180 Gold is for people who have no experience with coding in Java. So this section will go more into depth about how the code works and how to write the code. Whereas CS 180 Black is more about if you have experience with coding in Java, so you won't go as in depth with it. Now, personally, I took CS 180 Black and it was a really good course. You learned everything you were required to learn and he covered material really well. For my semester, it was Dr. George Adams. And for the gold section, it was Dunsmore. And Dunsmore is also a really good professor. So no matter which section you choose, you can be rest assured that they're both good professors. Now, in addition to the lectures, you also have homeworks, which you have in the lab and it's due over the course of a week. And these will be like longer coding projects where you'll learn more about the concepts taught in class that week and the prior weeks before it. So yeah, so that's the homeworks. And in addition to this, you also have final exam, which if you take it in the fall, is an online exam and I think in the spring it's an offline exam. So in the fall it's like a small portion of your grade because you also have a team project. So let's talk about team project. The team project as it suggests is when you're working on a team to create an application that's based on running in Java. And this application is designed based on criteria set by the course itself. So if you're working with a lot of different people creating your application, like groups can be like three, four or five people. And you also create a presentation at the end to present your product as if you're demoing it to a client. So yeah, so that's CS180. Okay, so let's talk about CS193. So CS193 is a course that's led by students rather than professors and it teaches you the skills for the tech industry, whether it be like GitHub, LaTeX, your resumes, interviews, that kind of stuff. So it teaches you more about the stuff that's above the CS theory and other kind of things like that. And the stuff that's taught in this course is really useful, like GitHub will be really useful to learn for your team project, to manage many people coding together. And later will be really useful in your next semester course, which is CS 182. I'll get to that course in the second section, that's a course and a half. But yeah. So CS 193 is a bit of a chiller class in a way, because it's more about learning stuff that's not theory related per se. And you do have to come to the courses and classes for this, because you will have an attendance quiz which has a magic word which you have to come to class to know in order to get the attendance grade. So yeah, so that's CS193. Now let's talk about Math162 or otherwise known as Calc2. For Calc2, I took Dr. Chen as my professor for it and he's a really good professor. He's really open to answering questions you have in class or outside of class. And even though you could get by by just watching his lectures on Chenflix, on Netflix, I would still recommend taking his actual class because it's so it's way more interactive and interesting when you actually take his course rather than looking at the videos online. His classes, I mean, are at 7.30 a.m. which is really harsh in winters. I still recommend his class and I don't regret taking it even at that early time. But yeah, so that's Calc 2. And in addition to this, to the classes, you also have recitations. I think Calc 2 has two recitations, so you have class on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday, Thursdays, you have recitations. So these recitations will be more about learning and de-learning kind of, based on the homeworks and things like that, about concepts taught in that week. So for example, if you have a class on Monday, your homework is released on Monday, you can ask questions about it on Tuesday. And you'll also be tested on a quiz with it as well, just part of your grade, both the homework and the quiz, in addition to the midterm exams. But yeah, so that's like a brief overview of Calc 2. Now let's move on to TDM 101, which is the data. So data mine is one of the largest communities at Purdue where you learn about data science and practices in it. So TDM 101 covers working on actual data and analyzing it using the R language. And it is a really interesting course when you look at it because you're learning how to apply data and figure out patterns, trends, things like that. In addition to this, to doing the homework, which is coding, you also have um, outside events. 
So these outside events is basically where there's these kind of conferences arranged by either data mine or Purdue themselves and you go there and learn about data science and write like a reflection kind of thing about it, which is also part of your grade. So yeah, that's TDM 101. I'll get to the last two classes, which is the two English classes that I took. So English 110 was a bit of a simpler English class in the sense that it was more about oral presentation, like creating videos like this for submissions. It's a really fun and lighter class in my schedule. And if you're taking it, I would highly recommend taking it with Miss Bush. She made it really interesting and a really fun class to take as well. And now the final section and course for the first semester. It's been a while, I know. So English 280. So this was my learning community specific class. So the data mine has a general data mine, which is the TDM courses. And then within that, you can choose to specialize in one particular one in addition to that. So I chose analyzing gaming and digital culture. And English 280 was really fun. It's a three hour class though, just mind you. And basically you play games in this class and talk about things that you notice in the game, like storytelling and features in the game that are there to attract attention and the way it's presenting the story, that kind of stuff. It was a very different way of looking at games for me and it was really interesting, like reanalyzing like Resident Evil or like games like that, for example. Yeah, so for me, for example, I looked at Resident Evil as my game of choice. So it was really interesting, like looking at this game through a different lens rather than just from a purely viewer standpoint. So yeah, so that's my first semester. Now let's move on to the second semester. Talk about the second semester. The semester where I kind of question CS, but yeah. So in this semester, I took CS 240, CS 182, English 111, TTM 102, and Math 261. So let's talk about CS182 and CS240. Those were the hardest courses that I've taken. So CS240 and 182 are required courses for your degree, so you will have to take them. You unfortunately cannot avoid them. So CS240 is programming with C, and it is taught by Professor Turkstra. He's a really good professor. He knows how to explain his material really well, showcases you a lot of examples so you understand it, and everything like that. But his midterms are quite hard, I'll have to say. Like he, tries to trick you with the way he phrases questions and things like that. So just keep that in mind when you take CS240. Now his grading skills a bit different wherein he basically has a grade limiter. Basically it means what happens is you know grade is limited by a midterm average. And it makes sense because a lot of us can use other stuff to do the homeworks as well. So this basically means that even if you have a B in the course, you could get a C because your midterm averages were a C like that. So that's kind of what happens with this grading. And let's talk a bit about the other stuff. So you do have a lab available to you. So you can go there and ask questions with TAs and in addition to that office hours as well. And for CS240, I would highly recommend going to office hours and going to labs to get help. And yeah, now another thing is in CS240, like in CS180, you code in an IDE. CS240, you do not. CS240, you are coding in the terminal. And though it is hard to get used to at the start, once you get used to it, it's really hard to go back. I find myself doing whim gestures on browsers and things like that. But yeah, so CS240 is quite a difficult course, but it is manageable. Now the next one, CS182. If you browse the Purdue Reddit, you know how much hate this class gets sometimes and how hard it is. And yeah, it does live up to the name. CS182 is quite a hard course because it's a screen mathematics firstly. But it's also because um, it's a very difficult course to understand as well. Like I found myself struggling to understand some concepts as well. So it's very hard to understand exactly what they want and how they're getting to it. At least for me, it might be a different experience for you. But yeah, so CS 182 is quite a hard course. In addition to this, they also have homeworks which are due on a weekly basis. So these will usually have like about seven to eight questions, so you know, six to seven questions in each homework and the last two are usually the longest ones out of all of them. So yeah, when you have CS 182 homework, you, you should really get on it like really quick because I struggle with deadlines from time to time because of the harder questions at the end. And once again, this also has office hours and that kind of stuff. So you can easily get help in case you're stuck. And they also have EdSTEM, which is where you can like ask questions and get responses from TA so you can understand where you're going, if you're going right or wrong. But yeah. So about the grading for CS182, so CS182 has the homeworks and quizzes in addition to your midterms. Your midterms is a majority of your grades, so you should not get off on the bad foot over there like I did. Yeah, the first midterm will come as a shock to you. 
I hope it doesn't, but for me it did. But yeah. So that's about CS 182. So for that I would recommend like if you want to get ahead of it in your winter stuff, you can go over the textbook. I'll link the textbook down below, but just for the name of it in case you want to go over the textbook already. But yeah. Then after this was Math 261, which is Calc 3. Now people often say Calc 3 is easier than Calc 2, but I surprisingly found Calc 2 easier than Calc 3. It's because Calc 3 is more about like visualizing 3D surfaces and also vectors and things like that, which I'm not particularly strong at, so I really struggled in this course. I took it with Andrew Toms, he explained the concepts really well, but I just struggled with applying it. But yeah. Once again, Cal3 also has videos from Dr. Chen online, so in case you're ever confused, you can refer to those videos, they're also really helpful. But yeah, so that's about Cal3. Now to the last two courses. So English 111 is similar to English 110, it's just a jump up where you go more into writing down stuff. So this is like reading books and analyzing them, creating presentations which are written rather than orally presented like on video. And I once again met Miss Bush, and she's a really good professor for English 110 and 111. So if you're taking these two courses, I would highly recommend going to Miss Bush's class. And then finally, TDM 102. So TDM 102 is similar to TDM 101 if you saw it in the last section. But it's again about analyzing data using a particular language. And this time it was done using Python. So yeah, so that is my first two semesters courses. Now let's move on to the next part, which is about the activities that I did other than studies. So let's get into that. Okay, so now let's talk about the second part, which is about the stuff that I took a part in during my time at Purdue extracurricularly. So for this, there's two things, which is clubs and hackathons. So in clubs, I'm a part of the photography club and the humanoid robot club. So the photography club is a club where people who are interested in photography can come and talk about everything to do with photography. So in case you have an interest in photography or just want to learn how to do the act of photography, like learn about how to take pictures of architecture or of sunsets, things like that, definitely join the photography club as there's a lot of like-minded people and you can learn a lot from them. And second is the Humor and Robot Club. The Humor and Robot Club is really interesting and it's a new club that's been founded by my friends and I. And it's the only club in the entirety of US focusing on building humanoid robots for space exploration. So in case you're interested in robotics or humanoids or just want to know about it, definitely check out our links down below. One is to our website and the other is to our Discord server. And if you do end up joining us, do let me know. I'd be really interested to know who all have joined from this video. And now the second part, which is the hackathons. So in the hackathons, I was part of Hello World and Boilermaker. So Hello World is a freshman only hackathon and it's a really interesting hackathon because it was my first ever hackathon experience. So it was a 24 hour hackathon that occurred in Walk this year and it's a really fun experience where me and my friends camped out in a Walk classroom developing a product while listening to music. It was a really fun experience and we also made a new version of Boilerlink in just a day which was really interesting and something which I thought I would never do. And the second one was Boilermake. So Boilermake is another hackathon, but it's on a much larger scale as people from different colleges as well come, like people from UIUCK, people from IU, people from Chicago, stuff like that. So in this, there's a ton of sponsors. So these sponsors have categories which you can build a product for. Like for example, I made a product with my friends and our group actually made a product for John Deere, which is a farming simulator. And we also in fact did even win a Lego set. So that was really fun and it's my first other prize from a hackathon. It's still packaged, I did not find a time to build it. But yeah, so that was a really fun experience and I would definitely recommend trying out these two hackathons if you come to Purdue, but I would highly recommend the Hello World Hackathon just so you can have a taste of what being in a hackathon feels like. So yeah, so that's everything about the activities that I took a part in during my time at Purdue. But in addition to this, I'm also a BGR team leader for this BGR that's happening in, in this year. So if you're part of BGR, definitely join up and sign up for BGR because it's a really fun experience and a really great way to be introduced to Purdue in one of the funnest and most memorable ways possible. So yeah, that's everything about activities in Purdue. So now let's talk about the last part, which is housing. So I lived in Hillenbrand in my first year and I'm living there again this year. So that should talk a bit about how much I love Hillenbrand. But yeah, so Hillenbrand has an advantage for us that it's a private room. So this basically means that you have four roommates sharing a bathroom. So it's like two on the side, two on the side, and a bathroom in between both of them. 
and joining the rooms together. In addition to this, Helen Brand also has the dining court inside of it. So if in case you want food Monday to Thursday and Sunday, it's there, but it's closed on Friday and Saturday and on Sunday it opens for the famous Hilly Brunch. Yeah, that's quite a famous thing and if you are on campus in Purdue, you definitely come on Sunday just to see how long the queue is for Hilly Brunch whenever, whenever it opens. It's quite long, sometimes it goes outside the building, but I digress. Anyways, and in addition to this, it is a bit far from campus, so we're all out of dorms, but Hilton Brand is about like a 10-15 minute walk to the main campus. But after like a few times of doing that, you get really used to it and it doesn't sound like much. But even like in cold weather, you don't want to really walk. That's fine. Hilton Brand has like two or three bus stops all around it for you to get access to campus through the bus routes. So you don't have to worry about transport to and from the campus. In addition to this, Hillbrand also has a lot of places around it, like it has Papa John's, I think, about a 10 minute walk away. It has Shenye, which is a really nice place to get chicken and rice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Shenye is over there as well. And then there's Earhart across the road, though there is construction around Hillbrand right now. So you have to like, kind of walk around Hillbrand in order to go to Earhart. So that's something you might want to consider if you're choosing Hillbrand. There is a bit of construction work going on outside, but it shouldn't ideally bother you during the day or night. And in addition to this, around Hilton Brand as well, there's Kidoba and Panera Bread, which are two really famous takeout places on campus. I found that I love Panera Bread. I love the sandwiches and salads there. But a lot of people prefer to eat Kidoba over dining courts as well sometimes because Kidoba offers really nice wedge options. So in case you're wedge, you might want to consider Kidoba. And if you want a dining court, I'd suggest Windsor for that. And just to preface this, I am non wedge so I'm not 100% sure what the best wedge options are, but from what I've heard, Kidoba and Windsor are the best places to go. Now sadly, Panera Bread and Kidoba won't be in your meal plan. From this semester, you'll have to pay it with, with retail dining dollars instead. So you might want to plan for that, like for example, take a lower meal plan to eat at Kidoba more often and spend your retail dining dollars there instead. But yeah. So that's everything about my first year at Purdue. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And if you are joining Purdue, well, welcome to Boiler Nation. I hope you have a great time in your first year. So yeah, that's everything for this video. See you in the next one.